This week, the Ontario Medical Transportation Company, Orange, has set a record for patient transfers. Moving intensive care patients out of the worst hit areas of the province, especially around Toronto. Taking them to regional hospitals that still have room. Some hospitals are at the breaking point. Beds full, staff exhausted. Every model shows that the situation will be getting even worse in the weeks ahead. Dr. David Nelipovitz is chief of critical care at the Ottawa Hospital. I, I think we all recognize that the numbers are going in the wrong way, so yes, it will be worsening. Ontario doctors are preparing for an emergency situation where critical care will have to be rationed. If there are just not enough intensive care beds to go around, the question becomes, who gets them and who doesn't? Critical Care Services Ontario has provided this color-coded chart for doctors to help assess a patient's predicted short-term mortality risk, assessing their chances of dying in the next 12 months from non-COVID causes. So do they have heart disease? Do they have lung disease, kidney disease? Do they have cancer? How likely are they to survive from their other um, illnesses and, and medical problems over the next year? Patients will be scored on the seriousness of their illness. Can they dress, bathe, eat, walk, or get out of bed without assistance? Could they handle their finances or go shopping? When the existence of this triage protocol leaked out, it enraged advocates of disabled people, like Toronto lawyer David Lepofsky. The problem is that Ontario's triage protocol is rampant with disability discrimination, and that is flagrantly contrary to the Human Rights Code and the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. It's a death sentence because refusing them critical care pretty much guarantees they're not going to survive. Doctors say there are explicit protections for disabled people in the triage protocol. And my, my opinion, and for what it's worth, is that disabilities doesn't factor in as a, as a major factor to limit care. Good morning, everyone. On January 21st, Critical Care Services Ontario released this webinar featuring Dr. Nilipovitz and others explaining the triage protocol to hospital staff across the province. This um, finger painting here is a schematic of what uh, triage might look like as numbers mount. The webinar included a chart showing how patients with the least likelihood of 12 months survival would be prevented from receiving critical care as the level of rationing increased. It emphasized that at least two doctors would have to sign off on any triage decision. Making these life and death decisions will be an enormous ethical challenge for doctors. None of us want to be playing God. None of us want to limit the care of anyone. I think the idea of we want to help the most patients possible. And so is it ethical to provide treatment that won't help an individual long term? Um, with it having the potential of harming another. So you can argue it's unethical to actually provide treatment as you would be harming another patient. The triage protocol includes possibly taking a patient off a ventilator. Currently, family consent is needed for such a gut-wrenching decision. The Tabara family is facing that now. 74-year-old Suhail Tabara was a vibrant and healthy father and grandfather before he was stricken with COVID and admitted to the Ottawa Hospital Intensive Care Ward back on February 1st. Because they say he's not getting better, the doctors want to withdraw life support. His daughter Nadine strongly objects. He's able to make eye contact, he can move his mouth as if he's trying to speak, um, and he can track you as well. Can you close your eyes, Dad? Good, now open them. <laughs> the ICU is full and the doctors are overwhelmed and I think they may be rushing to decisions like this. The hospital says this would happen even if there was no pandemic. But you're in there, Baba. The final decision could ultimately be made by a consent and capacity board with patients' rights representation. One of the most controversial elements of this debate concerns emergency medical technicians who work in ambulances. Sometimes those EMT paramedics make the decision to insert a breathing tube to keep a patient alive until they reach the hospital. Then, by law, 
That breathing tube cannot be withdrawn without consent from a patient or next of kin. They would not initiate resuscitation in certain scenarios. And in the triage protocol the webinar, there was discussion of whether ambulance attendants should be instructed not to intubate some patients. We've been warning for a year of what we call trickle-down triage. Now, when an ambulance comes to your home in a crisis, you expect them to do everything that they can. The discussion was always about doctors running the rendering decisions, uh, not EMTs in your driveway. Will you get into a situation where ambulance attendants are told, don't intubate anyone? Yeah, that, that can happen. It would be naive for us to think that triage or changes in standard of care have not already, in effect, come about. David Leposky believes that any patient facing triage should have the right to an appeal to a consent and capacity board. There should be an expeditious opportunity for the patient to have input and for a lightning fast uh, appeal process if needed. Mr. Leposky is worried that the Ontario triage protocol will be implemented on an emergency basis without further debate. And the Premier of Ontario, the Premier of any province, can't suddenly claim now, oh, we're caught, this is an emergency, we have to act quickly. They've known of this issue for upwards of a year, if not longer. And if they're not ready for it, uh, that's because of their failure to address it properly. Even the doctors who wrote the protocol say it's not perfect, but it's better than nothing. 10-9 to Sunnybrook on a CTAS-1 FTT. Patient is unresponsive, GCS-3. The risk being that without a plan, the decision might be left to what they consider the crudest decision-making possible. That those who get to the hospital first will get the care until all the beds are full. Terence McKenna, CBC News, Toronto.